All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how I powered my items inside the Jeep and how I kept my batteries charged while I was on my six month overlanding trip, seven months if you include North Dakota. And this is a simple solution that I came up with that is what anybody can do. It's just a couple of purchases. But I wanted to find something that wasn't solar and that did not require a heavy, expensive battery. So for that reason, I chose this method. And it includes nothing more than an inverter and a few battery packs. And I'll show you how I managed to make all that work for the items that I had. Now keep in mind that I didn't have a refrigerator or something that used a lot of electricity, so I was able to get away with this method. It might not be a full solution for you, but maybe you can use it as an alternative source in case uh, you can't use solar or you don't have an electrical hookup, or for just maybe quick jaunts uh, camping or doing a week overlanding trip or something like that and not having to worry about solar power. So like I said, this worked for me. I'm going to continue to use it in the future and I just thought I'd share it with you. But you'll have to decide whether or not this is a solution that you want to run with. So this is what it looks like installed in my Jeep. Now because I sleep in the back, I have my front seat pushed all the way forward. So I'd have just enough clearance for the seat and the inverter. I have access to all four USB ports, two here, two here. You also have the on off switch right there. So here's a little bit better view of it. As you can see, I have one screw here and I have one on the opposite side mounted right to the plastic on the middle console. That's worked really well for me. I haven't had to bother putting the screws down here. So you can see that I've got two USBs already plugged in. This one here goes to my Garmin inReach. This one here goes all the way to the back of the cab, goes underneath the driver's seat, and then I connect that to my lights in the back. This one here I have for my phone up front, and then the other one back here actually runs up and it goes to my Rove dash cam. So I use this to power everything, and you can plug anything that doesn't take over 400 watts. So you're not going to be running a blender or anything like that over this, but it does work with laptops, drone batteries, other rechargeable batteries, and my power packs. So that works out really well for me. Now I have this plugged right into one of my cigarette lighters. I've got two, one here and one there. That one turns off with the ignition or if the key's not all the way forward. This one here isn't always on. So the nice thing about that is even when I don't have this in the on position like it is now, all the USB plugs work. So if you're not careful, you could drain your battery. Something to point out about the inverter that I think is a good thing to have on here and others probably have it too, but I've noticed that there's a light right here and it's either green or it's red. If it's green, it's powering the items that are plugged into here when this is in the on position. If it's red, it's no longer powering them. Now, somehow it detects or somehow determines whether or not it has enough power from your battery to run what's going on inside of here. And if it's red, it's decided it's no longer gonna pull juice from the battery and your items are no longer going to be charged but the little fan in here will keep running anyway so you still have to turn this off to turn that off but it is a good fail safe so that you don't completely run your battery dead while you have things charging in this so i've never had the problem but there have been times where i've tried to charge things where i'm sitting still and don't have my engine on it'll run for a little while and then it'll turn red and stop powering so. but this is a great device 400 watts I have it plugged in underneath here you have a, a positive and a negative terminal and there's two wires that just connect onto that post these unscrew and then you screw them down and then I have the wire running back here and up through into here so that's how I have it powered it's worked out really well you could also power this right to your battery terminal if you wanted to. But if you do run this direct to your battery, make sure to put some kind of relay in place so that if something were to go wrong, you're gonna blow the fuse in the wiring leading up to this and not the fuse inside of this compartment here. Uh, probably be a lot easier to replace for you. So here I have one of my beaded 800 amp power packs and it has two USB connections for it. And then that screen tells you where you're running it power wise and I've got 77% on this. In this case, I've got them hooked up to my lights rather than using the wire that I have directly to my battery. So I can light up the back of my cab. And these particular lights, I think will 
stay on for about six to seven hours on one charge from this. So I'll usually run these for a couple of hours at night before I go to bed and then I can turn them on in the morning or in the middle of the night if I need to get up for any reason. So that is one great use for these. And then when I need to, I just take this, plug it into the AC power on my inverter and then charge it while I'm driving. And these take about, I would say, four hours to charge. So you really need to uh, plan ahead when you're charging these. Um, directly into the wall, I can't remember how long they take to charge, but off the inverter, it's about four hours. Something that I like about these and having a couple of these rather than a large like Jackery battery source or something like that is that I can take this and I can just put it in the back pocket. I can stick it underneath my bed. I can take it camping with me. It's small, it's compact. It only weighs one to two pounds. So it's a lot more useful to be able to carry it around than to have a much larger battery pack uh, to charge up my items here in the back. And again, having it in the back pocket, I can also then connect my USB fans, which would go right up here in the window, just run the cord right over to here, and then I don't have to worry about it. Same thing with that side. I'll usually, if I have my fan on that side, I'll take the battery pack and just lay it on that side of the door. So it's very versatile when it comes to moving these things around. So I have power wherever I need it, and I don't have to worry about handling something that's uh, 10, 15 pounds um, to move where I want it to go. Here are the fans I was talking about earlier being in my windows. I have this set of larger fans. There's three of them here. And then I have another smaller set of four fans that can run off of the battery packs. Both of these could run off of one battery pack for about six or seven hours. I think I was getting at least seven hours out of each charge when I'd run both of them. And one set would run for much longer than that. So that came in really useful and used that constantly when I was on the road. So that is just one example of how these can power up your USB items. So in addition to using two of these 800 amp power packs, I have a third one by the same company that is a 1200 amp. This one I always keep charged at 100% and it's sitting underneath my driver's seat. I use this to jump my battery if I ever need to. So very happy that I had this. So even if you don't use these for USB, these are great to have. I know they make them smaller to jump your vehicle as well, but this never got down below, I think like 75%. And there were a couple of times where I had to jump it more than once uh, because I was having a fuel issue and it wouldn't stay running. So I'd have to keep jumping the dead battery to get the, uh, the vehicle moving. But all three of these battery packs come with your jumper cables and then this hooks into the battery pack and then you charge them with either a wall unit i just plug this into the inverter and then you can also charge them with a cigarette lighter attachment so very useful things to have for powering usb and or jumping your vehicle so one thing to point out about an inverter and i'm sure somebody's going to leave a comment below about this but i'm not going to argue this point is to whether or not you need a pure sign inverter or an inverter that is not pure sign. In my case, I went with one that is not pure sign, and I did that based on a little bit of research as well as talking with both of my uncles who happen to know electrical very well. The theory, or some people would say the fact, is that if you do not use a pure sign inverter for rechargeable batteries, that it will cause your battery to lose its performance, maybe not charge fully or drain a lot faster. I, for one, have not noticed, even after seven months of constantly recharging the batteries that I used, a reduction in the amount of energy that it puts out or how long they lasted. And my drone batteries are a good case in point. I recharge those nonstop because I was always using my drone. And the length of the battery is just as good now as it was out of the box when I bought it new. Now, they might say that it takes a year or two years or whatever. I, I don't know, but like I said, that was my decision. I think you need to do your own research as to what way that you want to go. But for me, when it came to either the rechargeable battery packs or like I said, anything else that I used, I have not noticed any problems to date. So that's just me, but like I said, make up your own mind on that. So anyway, I hope you found something in this video useful as far as maybe alternative power sources. 
And of course, leave your comments below about anything that you saw, especially if there's a power source that you use that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of that is inexpensive, and uh, maybe there's something that I could even use in the future. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I try to answer all the comments uh, within a few days, or at least let you know that I read your comment. So definitely leave those below, and I'll talk to you next time.